Hey everyone, I'm so glad that you could join me again. So all week you've been sending in your questions for me to answer on this video. What I'm going to do is bake a very special dessert that is one of my favorites that I've never made before and answer your questions while we do that together. So I hope that you will enjoy this episode and find it fun. So the first question is from Rebecca Pleasance and it says, did you ever struggle with things you're good at now, like cleaning, decorating, cooking? I think sometimes people see you and think you were born good at these things and they can feel unattainable, but I'm sure you're a human being just like the rest of us. And yes, that is completely true. I am a human being just like the rest of you. And what I've always tried to do with my channel is really explain that I am a novice at most things that I do and the joy for me is learning new things and sharing them. So everything that I've shared on YouTube and through social media so far has always been an experiment for me. Any of the things that I've filmed are things that I've never done before and it was always that when you're watching me do them that was the very first time. So I can absolutely say that definitely I'm a novice and all the things that I have got good at is just through practice and trial and error. So this is the perfect example because I've never made this banoffee pie before. It's just one of my favorite desserts. So I thought that I wanted to try it out and share it with you. I don't know how it's going to go. It could be that it ends up in a complete disaster, but at least I've given it a try. And if it doesn't go well, then I can always try again until it does. So let's make this together for the very first time. Complete beginner, you with me. So what we're going to do to begin is I've crushed some digestive biscuits in the blender and they are the base of our pie and the way that I've got everything laid out is a really good way to make sure that you are really prepared when you're doing something new. If you're trying to read a recipe and doing everything as you go along you're going to find that maybe you get a bit confused, you're not doing things in the right order but if you get everything ready that is a great way to ensure that you'll have a more guaranteed chance of success when you're doing something. So that is a really good tip and something that always works well for me. So what we're going to do, we're going to put these crushed digestives into this bowl. And then I have melted some butter. And we're going to add this into here and then we will mix it together and that will give us a beautiful base for our banoffee pie. Let's put the butter in. And now we're just going to mix this together until we have our base. And yeah, so all the things that I have become good at are things that I really wanted to learn and things that I thought that I would be passionate about eventually. So when you do things like that, that you really want to try, I think it kind of gives you a motivation to want to do it very well. And that doesn't mean that you have to become an expert. It just means that you take the time to practice. You don't rush. You really get yourself prepared before you start the particular task and then you can put your whole energy and effort into it. And what I found actually is that more often than not, it always works out really, really well. So this is starting to come together now. The final thing that I would say is that if you really want to do something, it will never be the right time. You know, you always say, I'll do it when this happens or when this happens. It will never happen. You just have to do it right now. And for me, I get a lot of questions from people asking about, you know, how do I start a YouTube channel? How do you get the courage to do it? It took me about three years to have the courage to start my YouTube channel and get the thought of my friends watching me out of my head. That was a huge thing, thinking that people are going to laugh and what are the people who know me going to think? But it doesn't matter, just do it, it's for you, and if you really want to do it, it will happen. So that's the last piece of advice, just do it. So our biscuit base is ready. I'm going to move on to the next question, and this is from MJVN. This is such a fun idea. My question is, what dish of your childhood you still love to eat? <laughs> I can't answer the last bit. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to pop this biscuit base into the tin and flatten it down. So my childhood was very happy. I grew up in a, a really modest area with my family. I've got a brother and a sister. And my mum worked really, really hard. She had, at one point, she had like four different jobs that she would do throughout various times of the day. So she wasn't really into cooking. She didn't have the time. 
So our meals throughout the week were quite simple. She was rushing a lot. She would rush home from work to feed us. And so we had simple meals. But one thing that she did do really well is on every Sunday, she, would, she would, didn't have to work on a Sunday, so she would make a traditional British roast. It may sound pretty self-explanatory, but a roast is something that we do here in Britain on a Sunday, it's a really traditional thing, and it's just meat, probably chicken, beef, or lamb, and then you serve it with all the traditional trimmings like roast potatoes and vegetables. So because she did that every Sunday, she got very good at it, and it was something that we always look forward to, and even now I like to go home occasionally when I can get down there and just enjoy one of my mom's traditional Sunday roasts. And then after the roast dinner, there was always a delicious pudding, and one of them was banoffee pie, so that is the reason why I wanted to make this today. I haven't had it for years and years at home. I've never made it, as I said before, so it's a little bit nostalgic, and I thought that it would be fun to do it now. So that is our biscuit base ready, and now what we need to do is chill this in the fridge, preferably overnight, but who has the time to wait? I'm going to do it for an hour, and that should be fine, so let's do that now. So while we're waiting for our banoffee pie base to set, I'm going to answer a few more questions. The next one is from Cy Wood, and he says, Hi, do you have a lot of friends or just a few? And how stressful is it to work as a YouTuber? Do you have a regular job? Okay, so I have quite a few friends, but in different groups. So when I first moved to Edinburgh, I didn't know anyone. I moved here two years ago. And one of the things that I was concerned about was not having any friends. I love friendships and I love going out with people who I enjoy spending time with. So making friends was one of my priorities when I moved here. And the way that it happened was really unintentional. My plan was to join a few different groups, things that I wanted to do, maybe take like a cookery school or an art class and meet people there. But then we went into the pandemic and everything closed down, so there wasn't really a chance for me to meet people in that way. And the way that I met people, kind of strangely, was because of the pandemic. So what we did here in the UK every Thursday was we celebrated our NHS and the amazing work that they were doing during COVID by coming out onto our doorsteps and clapping. And through doing that, I met a few neighbours and then that spiralled out. And now I've got a really good friendship group here in Edinburgh, probably about 10 friends, five close ones, the others more acquaintances who I see every now and then, we go out for drinks and have fun together. But I've got a really beautiful friendship group here and that's why it feels like home. And I think you could live in the most beautiful place ever, but if you don't know anyone and you haven't got that friendship group or family around you, then it's gonna be difficult to connect with the place and for it to feel like home. So that is why friendships are really important to me. I've also got uh, quite a nice friendship group from my school days and my hometown. So when I was at school, I made friends with a group of about eight girls and we have been friends all this time, even though we've all gone off and done our own thing, we've managed to stay together as a group and meet every now and again. And when we do, it's like nothing's changed and like we saw each other yesterday, we're just yee, chatting constantly and you can never, no one can speak because we're all dying to say the next word. So that is my friendship group from home. I think I'll be friends with them forever now. Uh, we, I left home at 18, now I'm 32, so I haven't seen them regularly for all that time. It's just now and again when I'm able to go back home. So the fact that we're still able to be friends like we, like we always were is a real good sign that we're probably going to be friends for the rest of our lives. And I think it is important to have those kind of friends that you've known all your life, that know you the best, and that you can always fall back on when you're feeling a bit low or like you need to chat to someone really close. And then I have what I like to call my international friends. So throughout my adult life, I've been lucky enough to travel quite a lot and live in a few different places. And whilst doing that, I've met people along the way. Some people who I really liked and then our friendship fizzled out, but most of them that we've developed a strong friendship. And even though we don't get to see each other, we still maintain our friendships. 
When I was living in Dubai, I made a really good friend and we haven't seen each other now for four years, but we still Zoom, Skype regularly, chat on WhatsApp. And it's like, it would be like I would, I've seen her yesterday if she came here today. So that is the kind of friendship I like to have. People who really have your back and who you know you can rely on. So when it comes to YouTube, is it stressful? I'll be completely honest, it can be, yes. I release a video every Friday and to get through to that day and provide a piece of content that is fun, engaging, interesting and something that people want to watch can be a stressful process. The way that I deal with that is to make sure that everything is planned meticulously. I've got a business partner who works with me on that and we plan our content quite far in advance. And then when we know we have a particular video coming up, we try to prepare, we get everything ready that we need for that video and that helps it become a less stressful situation. But even so, it is quite stressful having the pressure of knowing that you have to deliver a video because you said you would on a Friday and even though it might look very simple, some of these videos, even just to get a three minute shot of a sequence video could take two hours to film. So it's very, very hard to fill videos with content that is good. And that is what I always try to do. I want to provide really fun, entertaining content. So I'm, I sometimes feel the pressure to make sure that I'm doing that. So now I'm pouring on the hot caramel sauce. The full recipe and how to make this is in the description of this video. We'll let this cool and harden and then top it with our fresh banana. So as you can see, the caramel sauce is cooling on our base. We're going to leave that just to cool for a little bit longer before we add on the banana. So what I'm going to do now is whip the cream. Now, what I always do is over whip. So I'm going to really try to make sure that I don't do that this time. Learning from past mistakes so that the cream is not over whipped and the right consistency. So let's answer a next question. This is from Chase Branham and he says, What music do you play for a party, tea or date? Okay, so let's get started. Lots of people probably don't know this about me, but I really like, although I do like the kind of music that you'd expect, like classic and more classical music, I actually really love house music, techno music, something with a real beat. One of my good friends is a DJ and we often have parties in his kitchen where he DJs and plays my real favorite music and I just love to get lost and dance to that so I love having parties with friends and dancing to that kind of music. For something like a tea or a tea party I would probably choose something a bit something a bit more relaxed something a little bit more elegant do you want the music to kind of be in the background rather than in the foreground and so the conversation is more of what is the focus. And for a dinner or a date, again, something very relaxing, something a little bit elegant, maybe romantic, that is just in the background. I think sometimes when you have a dinner and people are over, it's nice to have that background music just to take the edge off any, any awkward silences. And oftentimes it will be a conversation starter. So I'm gonna go ahead and whip the cream. So the cream is perfectly whipped. I didn't over whip it this time, which is a good thing. And we're going to move on to the next question. This is from Joy Wynart. And she says, hello, I really enjoy your channel. Thank you. Uh, my question is, when you have dinner guests over, do you clean up right away after eating while your guests recline in another room? Or do you wait until they leave to clean up? That is a really good question. And I will tell you that I never, ever, ever ask anyone to help me clean up when I'm having a dinner party. I think that we all know what it's like when you ask someone, when you go to their house, oh, would you like any help? We're all secretly praying that they say no. So I know that, and I know that people just want to have fun when they're here. So I just close the door on the kitchen and move on and think we'll just sort out the kitchen later on. And I think that is what you should, everyone should do. As you can see, I'm just putting the banana on top of our hardened caramel. I'm just gonna cover the whole of the base with this. And then we're almost done with our banoffee pie. 
The only thing I would say about having a dinner party and tidying up is just make sure that you've got enough space in the kitchen or wherever you're hosting so that if you need to do your dessert or pudding or even serve some drinks that you've got space to do that because there have been so many times that I've entertained at home and I've been in kind of a rush and there's dishes and pans everywhere and then I'm suddenly lost for space and can't finish my dessert or serve a drink. So my advice is plan ahead a little bit, tidy as you go along and then you'll have enough space to do everything else that you need to do to make sure that your party is fun and successful. Okay, let's move on to the next question. This is from Jess Booth. Greetings from Australia. Greetings to you too. It's nice to know that we have people from so far across the world watching. The question is, your content is always so calming and restful. What do you do for self-care slash mindfulness to stay in such a cheerful state? <laughs> okay, well, as I've mentioned in one of my first videos of this year, I wanted to make some changes in my life to really become more calm, confident and achieve some of the things that I wanted to do. And actually in my next few videos coming up, I am going to be focusing on wellness and how I look after myself to make sure I'm living my best life. So please do stay tuned for that because it's going to be a kind of a bit of a, a special over the next few weeks talking about wellness and the way that I stick to my goals and make sure that I'm doing things that I want to do with my life. Just to answer your question, um, I'm not always completely positive. I also have my off days, which you don't really get to see here. I'm always showing my the best side. I think that's what people on social media tend to do. But when I'm having a day where I'm not feeling so great, I just try to focus on my aims and goals for my life, what I want to achieve. And I just try to stick to the positive side of life and let myself wallow in self-pity for a while and then move on. You have to move on, otherwise you can let it drag you down. Okay, so the banana is on. The next step is to add the cream and then we're going to put some flake chocolate over and that is it. Super simple and easy, but very delicious. So let's take another question. This is from Spa de Soaps. I was wondering what future plans and goals you have dreamed of or thought of for your YouTube followers, such as tea party ideas, books with recipes or an online store with tea wares that you use in your recipes so that we can buy and create with. Okay, so... If you don't know, I do have an online store. It is nicholasfairford.com and we launched that just before Christmas. There's only one product on there now and that is my Botanica fragrance candle, which has been a real success. People have seemed to really love it, which I'm so pleased about because it was a year of hard work and it was, it's been so nice to see that the vision that I had and this, the fragrance that I really enjoy has been really loved by everybody else too. So in terms of what is the dream for me, the dream is to continue building a brand and just the whole thing, the whole reason why I started YouTube and my social media was because I love to share. I want to continue to share and just build a brand that helps everybody else to make their lives more beautiful. And doing that with the candle has made me realize how much I love doing, doing it and how much I just want to continue on. So yes, I'm just putting the cream on top of our pie in no particular fashion, just whipping it on. I think it looks a lot better when you do it more relaxed and casually rather than trying to make it look too perfect. This is looking really nice. I'm pleased with this. So Nick, what about the question everyone's been asking? <laughs> uh, about the date. Um, as you can see, the date went really well. <laughs> and we're going to have a third date. So to finish off, I've just shredded some dark chocolate and I'm just going to sprinkle that over the top. Oh, it looks so good. I'm really excited to try this. My first banoffee pie. The first question that I answered about just making an effort and trying things even when you're a little bit afraid, just proves that if you just take your time, concentrate, you can really just do anything that you want to do. So the moment of truth. Mm. 
so delicious. Mm. Please do try this recipe, it is heaven. Well, I really hope that you have enjoyed this episode and found it fun. For me, it was really cool to answer some of your questions and bake the banoffee pie, which thankfully turned out to be a success. I hope you have a really great weekend and I'll see you next week. But until then, take care. See you soon.